Hello everybody and welcome back to another restoration video. In this video, we will be restoring a vintage tool just like we used to do in my videos. <laughs> More specifically, we will be restoring this miniature vintage hand plane. Before we begin, it would really mean a lot if you could leave a like or subscribe on this video. Additionally, I've done another hand plane restoration in the past. It was a giant hand plane restoration made by the Stanley Company. So if you want to see the restoration of that, feel free to click the link in the description below. So without further ado, let's get into this restoration. Like every restoration project here on this channel, the first step is to take everything apart. Taking this guy apart was actually really simple. All I had to do was unscrew the handle and undo two other screws and the entire thing came apart. Alrighty, so here are all the pieces laid out. And as you can see, they're not too terrible. We got a lot of dust on it and a little bit of rust, but not as bad as the other one that I did. This piece right here is gonna cause me a couple of problems because as you can see, there's this little silver adjuster attached to the black metal piece. And I'm going to have to repaint the metal piece, but also polish the silver part. So I'll have to mask one of them off while working on the other and bounce back and forth between the two. But it's difficult because I can't remove it. Now it's time to give all the pieces a bath. I have a mixture of Dawn dish soap and hot water here that'll act as a degreaser to get off all the dust and grease that's on this piece. A lot of people have criticized me for washing rusted metal in the past. This is because the chemical reaction for oxidation comes from a combination of iron, oxygen, and water, which I will get more into in a minute. But in reality, this is a restoration project, so do we really care that much if there is rust present or not? Here's everything after the bath, and you can see we've already had a huge improvement. Now, a lot of people may be asking, Why? Is it a bad thing to mix rust with water? And let me explain it to you. Here is the chemical compound that shows how iron rusts. And if you don't understand this, I'll break it down for you. Basically, what this equation at the top is stating is that when you combine iron with oxygen with water, you'll get what's called iron oxide, aka rust. Now, the iron is always present because it's in the metal that we're working with. Additionally, oxygen is always present because it's in the air we breathe. The only thing that's not always present is water. So basically, by adding more water, we're increasing the speed at which this reaction occurs, causing this to rust faster. That's why a lot of people say it's bad to wash something that's rusty, which is normally true. However, it doesn't really affect me that much because I'm going to be removing all of the rust anyway. Speaking of removing things, let's get into removing this paint. I'm using a gel paint stripper known as Citrus Strip that's really helpful for removing old paint off of projects like this. I'm doing it outside because I'm flicking it around a lot with a brush and this chemical is really strong. I don't want to get it on a car or anything inside that has paint on it because it will remove the paint from that as well. Once everything has a coating on it, I'm probably going to leave it sit for maybe an hour or two and then wash it off and see the results. Fast forward a couple hours and here we are over the wash tub. I'm going to rinse this off with water while scrubbing with a wire brush to remove all the loose paint. I know that this isn't going to clear off 100% of the paint, it usually takes a few applications for this to really work, so let's see what it did. Here are the pieces after the first application of Citrus Strip. I knew it wouldn't take off that much, it probably removed less than 10% of the paint that was originally on there. But now that we scratched all the paint with the wire brush, the second application should work a lot better. Here are the pieces after the second application. You can see the piece on the left is basically done. I don't think I need to do another coat on that one, but the piece on the right still has more Citrus Strip that it needs. Here it is bathing for the third time in Citrus Strip, and I just wanted to show you how strong this stuff really is. This is a piece of wood that I use to spray paint everything that I paint, so it has many, many layers of paint on it, and you can see that Citrus Strip has actually brought it down to bare wood again. In fact, I decided to take a putty knife and scrape off all the loose paint that was lying on top of the board, and you can see exactly the outline of all the pieces that we were working with today. Here are the pieces now, and I'm completely done paint stripping them. I could do a fourth coat on the piece on the right to get it 100% clean. However, on the next step where I'm removing rust with a wire wheel, I'm sure I'll be able to get the rest of the paint off that way instead. Now let's move on to the wooden knob. And what I have to do for this is sand away all the old stain that's on it. But what I want to do is go for an ashy kind of vintage look, which involves me sanding away some of the stain in some areas, but keeping it in some places. This process takes a really long time. I've sped up about five minutes worth of sanding here, but in reality, I probably sanded this thing for two hours. And here we are after sanding. Lastly, I'm gonna apply a light colored stain. This will hopefully give it the ashy look that I want it to have. Moving on to the metal pieces, what I'm gonna do now is hit all the metal with a wire brush. What this is going to do is essentially remove all of the rust and other dirt that's still stuck on the metal. I know it's kind of hard to see on camera the effect that this is having, but hopefully you can see right here there's a very clear cut line where the rust stops because the wire wheel was able to remove all of it. Here's where the pieces are at right now with all the paint and rust removed. 
For the pieces that don't need paint, what we're going to do is use a really fine sandpaper to sand away all the imperfections and then shine them with a metal polish. That's what I'm doing here with this screw by having it in the drill. I'll spin the screw really fast against some sandpaper and then once again against some metal polish and I'm going to do this process with all of the metal pieces. Now to start the painting process, the first thing I'm going to do is apply a coat of Rust-Oleum primer. Rust-Oleum is a really good brand for things like this because it's designed specifically to paint over things that were once rusted to keep it from rusting further. The primer has been scratched up with a scoring pad which gives the paint a better surface to stick to so now it's time to apply the black paint. The last thing I want to do before putting this back together is on this piece I want to sand and polish the three sides that don't have paint on them. So let's go ahead and do that. First we'll sand it down, then we'll add a little bit of metal polish. Now everything is ready to reassemble. You may notice that I struggle a bit with this first screw. That's because it has reverse threads on it so instead of being righty tighty it's righty loosey and lefty tighty. And here is this thing all done. I hope you guys appreciated this video. If you do, feel free to leave a like or a subscribe and check out the other restorations on my channel. Thanks.